I'm good. It's absolutely beautiful, and what a wonderful location this is. You know, it is. and only a two or three miles off the freeway. Yep. And um, but uh, here we are in the wild, and uh, the the birds are trying to steal our lunch. I meat pies. I meat pies. Yeah. <laughs> they are. It's beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Thanks for choosing the location. I mean, thank you for turning up and taking the time out to come and talk to us. In your busy schedule, it does mean a lot. It really does. Can you please tell our tell our viewers about your involvement in the anti coal seam gas movement in the UK? Yeah, well, actually, the last time I was over here in Australia, I was um, talking about the problems of coal seam gas in Australia, and the whole issue was just starting to kick off in the UK. Yeah. And uh, literally, as soon as I got back to the UK, um, I started uh, a tour of 64 dates around the country to try and raise awareness about uh, this industry, because uh, this this um, industry which uh, extracts the gas through a process known as hydraulic fracturing. And this is a process that wherever it has been unleashed around the world results in the contamination of water, the soil and the air. It causes people to have some pretty serious um, negative health impacts. Yeah. And uh, so here in Australia, where in, since I was here in southern Queensland, so just about 250 kilometres to the uh, west of here, yep. since I was last here, they've drilled about 3,000 wells. And uh, in, in parts of southern Queensland, the farmers can no longer farm the land. They can't uh, give the cattle the water, the livestock the water. They can't use the water to grow crops. And they can't use it for any domestic purposes because it's become so contaminated. Mm -hmm. And yet the people in the cities have no idea what's going on. Yeah, because they don't. They just don't tell anybody. They don't. They, yeah. It's out of the. It's out of the news, mm. and people obviously in the cities they have very busy lives, and uh, you know their free time they're out partying or you know yeah. dining or whatever, and uh, so they don't have the opportunity to actually investigate what's occurring, and this is exactly what the industry and the government unfortunately rely on. Yeah. So in the UK, we are still frack free. Yep. We have had no wells drilled or fracked since 2011. So only one well has been drilled and fracked in the UK to date. It's becoming more and more difficult to maintain that record. Yep. But uh, our intention is to do everything we can to raise awareness and eventually get this industry shut down in the UK. And I would love to think that ultimately that would also be the case in Australia yes. before this beautiful country becomes an even bigger desert than it is already. That's exactly right. And do you think more and more people are starting to click on about everything that's happening and will back everything up and well, make a change? It, it's it's tough duty here in Australia. Yeah. Um, when I was in Gloucester in New South Wales, if I had a buck for every time somebody said to me, you know, Ian, this is a really, really conservative yeah. community and they trust the government. Um, so you've got the attitude of uh, ultra conservatism where people still believe everything the government tells them is true and that you know their government would never do anything that causes them any harm and then you've got the other attitude which is she'll be right mate yeah. you know and it's like whatever happens don't worry about it because she'll be right and unfortunately the government and the industry rely on those two attitudes to be able to just go and do whatever it is that they want to do that's which true. is effectively rape and pillage this beautiful country of its natural resources yeah that's exactly right and it's such a shame really it's yeah. horrendous and i mean i you know all, as always i always ask people not to take anything i say at face value yep. but to do their own research and look at this for themselves and i would absolutely encourage people to uh, put into their search engine brian monk brian monk csg yep. or brian monk videos because brian monk is a farmer um, out in um, near tara or dorby yep. and he's put a, a number of videos up on youtube showing how this industry has effectively destroyed not only his livelihood but also his life because 
Brian is absolutely convinced that the uh, health issues uh, that his four-year-old grandson suffers from are directly related to living in a contaminated coal seam gas environment. It's horrendous because you know we can't imagine that uh, there is an industry that would knowingly do this. Yeah. But they're ju it's just greed. Yeah. It's sheer greed. Because of the money. Because of the money, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you know, the, because of the power of these corporations, they lobby the politicians. Mm -hmm. They promise the politicians, you know, enormous salaries, and when they leave office. Yeah. So all they've got to do in return is make sure that the coal seam gas industry has pretty much open access to the country. Yeah. Completely ignoring the fact that the electorate don't want it. Yeah. And then when they come out of office, where of course they earn a you know a nice salary, but it, you know, in the scheme of things, it's not a, yeah. a mega salary. And then when they leave political office, they go join these companies, and of course that, that's when they make out like bandits. We recently filmed at Bentley on the cold seam gas. What are your thoughts on that? I was absolutely amazed that you guys made the trip down to Bentley, but it was wonderful to see you there. And I was, I was watching from the UK. Oh, really? Yeah, I was watching the Aussie Beach reports uh, from Bentley because I was following the whole Bentley operation very closely because this is a tremendous success. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, Northern Rivers is, is a rather unique area and I think uh, pretty much everyone in Australia, certainly on the East Coast, recognises that Northern Rivers, you know, the communities there, Byron Bay, Nimbin yeah. uh, and the likes, you know, these are the... I mean, I'm, I'm told that they are acknowledged as the old sort of hippie communities. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whereas today, um, you know, it, it tends to be environmentalists and ecologists and people who have an interest in, the, in protecting the environment. And because Bentley is so close to Lismore, to Byron and Nimbin, yeah. then people from these communities were going en masse to Bentley. And I think uh, that some weekends there was like 2,000 people there. And then when the New South Wales government threatened to send in 700 riot police to break them up, the following weekend there was 10,000 people there. So the New South Wales government realised that they had a little bit of uh, a problem on their hands here and uh, it might not go down too well politically. So they backed off and they actually withdrew Metgasco's licence yeah. on the grounds that clearly they hadn't fulfilled their obligations for uh, community liaison. Wow. <laughs> so that's one down, but yeah. uh, and it's great to see. And I mean, Bentley is an absolute inspiration. I mean, it's an inspiration for, I think, people in the UK, in the US, and hopefully also here in Australia, because when I was down in Gloucester in New South Wales, which is about 200 kilometers or so, south of uh, Bentley, maybe even a little bit further, yeah. but you know, there was barely a dozen people at Gloucester. And uh, I actually asked somebody, I said, what's the difference between Gloucester and Bentley? And they said, about 1,800 people. Yeah. And ultimately, when the politicians are not listening to their electorate, all you're left with is getting in front of the gate and actually stopping the trucks from coming in. Yeah. And if one or two people do it, then obviously they'll just be arrested and charged with obstruction yeah but when you've got 2,000 or 10,000 people They're there passionate about it it's a whole different ball game yeah and it's good when everyone gets together and actually does take a stand because good outcomes like this do happen well that's a, that's a great observation actually because you know I think one of the great things that's coming out of the coal seam gas agenda yeah right across the world is that it's bringing people together from right across the social spectrum. Yeah. You know, it's bringing people together who probably wouldn't even talk to each other. They probably actually don't agree on very much else. Yeah. <laughs> but they do recognise that this is an industry that is going to contaminate the one thing we all need, yeah. water. And especially in this country, which is a spring-fed nation, mm. and the gas industry is sucking water out of the Great Artesian Basin at a rate six times greater than it can naturally replenish. Mm. And you know, what's, what's going to happen to uh, Eastern Australia when the Great Artesian Basin is effectively sucked dry? Well, it's just going to vanish away because exactly. even humans are, what, 85% made of water? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> So, you know, basically we can survive without gas, Yeah. Uh, we can survive without oil, but we can't survive more than two or three days without water. Exactly. And uh, so, you know, this, 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 there's something not right about what's occurring mm. here. And uh, hopefully what we'll see is more people from all around Australia coming together to making fight this pernicious industry. Exactly. Yeah, that's Making it. a stand. And the, I think the critical thing is, Janaya, you know, we have to get people to focus on what they agree on. 
Yep. Because the establishment does a really good job of divide and conquer. So what it does is it identifies the, the things that they know that, say, you and me disagree upon. Yep. And then they'll try and drive a wedge between us based on the fact that we disagree. The fact that we're both in total agreement on something like the protection of our water, mm -hmm. that's what we have to focus on yep. and not get bogged down on what we disagree on. That's exactly right. And it is a big deal. It really is. <laughs> it's huge. You know, and the other factor is that right across the world, about, I would say, probably 70% of people right at the front of the anti-fracking movement mm -hmm. are female. Yeah. And, and I think this is because the women can actually see that, obviously, if we don't have access to water, then, you know, we're threatening the whole longevity of uh, humanity mm -hmm. whereas unfortunately in a lot of cases the men are more interested in you know the immediate you yeah. know what well, how do i get the money for this month's rent or mortgage or keep the food on the table run the cars keep the kids in the school whatever yep. and they're not looking at the longer term now i accept that that's very much a generalization but you know what i would ask any of the guys watching this is to question how you're going to survive without water i mean god damn it even beer needs water. Yeah, well, exactly right. That's a good point. <laughs> and I can't imagine yeah. an Aussie bar without beer. And Australia with no beer sounds like misery to me. <laughs> and I'm sure to probably 95% of the male population of Australia. Yeah. So if, um, you know, if, if the male population of Australia wants to keep drinking Australian beer, it better start thinking about its water supply. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,